Hello, everyone. I believe we have our hello, audio hello. going. There we are. Konbanwa. Indeed. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Saturday anime stream. We're here to chat about anime. Um, we were not here last week because Verizon decided I didn't deserve internet. Um, so I was internetless last week. We were going to talk about the season's anime last week. We'll do that this week instead. So how you guys been? It's been uh, two weeks since we, we chatted. What you it's been, been new season horrific. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, I'm, I'm thankful, actually, for the time to watch some of these shows, so I'm not completely blind in one in one eye. <laughs> By the way, I have to compliment you, Brent, on your, your choice of cups tonight. Thank you. Your, 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 your mug tonight. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. This is my D20 mug. Um, I must admit, it was a gift from my, one of my D&D &D players. Um, nice. I was not aware of it, and then it just showed up one day. <laughs> So that was uh, that was very nice, but yes, it's it's uh, one of my favorite mugs. Um, cool. Well, let's get into it. Uh, let us talk about the season's anime. We're going to go through alphabetically, um, as usual. The way we do this, um, the thing is, so we don't. We, this is all the TV anime, so we're not talking movies or OVAs. Um, we're skipping anything that is a season two or a season three or things along those lines because we figure. If you're interested, you're probably going to go back to the previous seasons and start there, and at that point you'll know whether you want to try the later seasons. Right. Um, and we're also skipping some of the, um, the stuff that's clearly like aimed at kindergartners, just like really, really, you know, stuff that's just kind of uh, um, not the typical sort of anime thing, if you will. No Poi Poi Mole Car? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but instead, let us begin with 243 Saiyan High School Boys Volleyball Team. Uh, which is a volleyball anime. It's yes, a, it is. High school boys <laughs> playing volleyball. I. Do you guys have anything here? <laughs> um, it's not Haikyuu. True. <laughs> so therefore, you have a whole new cast of characters to do this thing, to the mm -hmm. volleyball thing. So. Mm -hmm. That's your your thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, I'm just waiting for the musical. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it happen. Might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all your elements are there. It's ready to go. Um, moving on to something that is not. <laughs> all, I mean, hey. Um, um, moving on to something that is definitely not all your standard elements. Back arrow. Um, yes. Boy, I I thoroughly enjoyed this simply because it is so many things happening at once. It's got, like, fantasy, sci-fi, mecha, Wild West. Um, it's, you know, yeah. there's a little bit of etchy in there. It's just tons of things all happening at once getting thrown at you. Um, I'm trying to remember there was an anime from um, a couple of years ago that was kind of like this. Um, and it's completely escaping me. But, um, yeah, it's just a horizon in the middle of nowhere. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, you've seen that. It's kind of this sort of big pastiche okay. of a lot of different things all, all, all happening at once. Um, kind of 90s in that, yeah. that way. You know, uh, uh, crazy. And a uh, pretty good um, animation budget, I would say. Um, what do you guys think? Well, I, I, I know it's not, because you know, obviously the, the <laughs> look of Gurian Lagan is mm. the way that it is. Mm -hmm. But it's like every time I kept seeing the Wild West vest, not only did I think of the bounty hunters from Cowboy Bebop, sure, mm -hmm. but I also I just had a Gurian log <laughs> feeling to it. It's like <laughs> these sort of you know things come down from nowhere, and there's a big fight for it, and Mecha things going all around. I'm like, wow, okay, that's the kind of feeling I'm getting from that. So yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, it sounds like something that I, that I should that I should watch. I didn't get to watch that one, but okay. uh, that, that sounds. Oh. Kind of it's definitely shonen. Yes, you know, uh, definitely the shonen thing. Um, it's interesting if that's if that's solidly in your strike zone, then mm -hmm. you're gonna really probably get some good good uh, good watching out of that. If mm -hmm. It's sort of peripherally, then you just really enjoyed that first episode and in the company of others who are watching it with you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, moving on to bottom tier character Tomozaki uh, on Funimation. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, when I think of this this series, the first thing I think of are these school uniforms, particularly those pants. 
um, because <laughs> they, they've got some some bold fabric styles in this show. Um, brown plaid is brown, the way to go. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, fairly straightforward kind of uh, romance series, I would say. Yeah. Um, not a complaint, but just very much, you know, boy-girl romance um, um, playing off things. I really like the artistic style of this. Um, I think one of the things that romance you know, and shoujo really needs uh, or really plays off of well are, for lack of a better word, attractive characters. Um, and I think the characters here are very, you know, just beautiful. Um, is that totally works. Um, it's always hard for the first episode of a shoujo series because it's like, you got to establish the, the personalities, but you don't really know where the romance is going. So you can't really tell what payoff there is. But what I saw there was an effective uh, setup for me. Now, did you feel that it was it was going to break any kind of new ground, or were you going to get what you expected out of it? It felt like I was getting what I expected out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that's where I, I I'm I'm always a, you know sucker for a slice of life, school yeah. romance kind of thing. It's like that, that's right straight in my strike zone. Mm -hmm. But I came off of this kind of the feeling. It's like I think after about two or three episodes, I understand the entirety of how they're going to mix in some of the other characters, and I will mm -hmm. know exactly where it's going. Mm -hmm. So it's very, twelve so... episode run. Very so quick. very far, yeah. very formulaic then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I did like the idea that it's about a uh, a gamer who doesn't who feels that life is unfair and feels yeah. that life is a, like a trash tier game and his challenge is to say what if what if life is a god tier game and you just have to get good. Um, it's like that's an interesting perspective and I, I'm I'm hopeful that the show I don't know that I will follow it but I'm hopeful that the show like like really digs deep into that metaphor. I think that's an interesting approach. Um, I just, I yeah. just think it's going to, it's, it's going to take that premise and it's going to apply the same old, you're a shut in, you're an antisocial person, and mm -hmm. here I am, I made myself better, and mm -hmm. I'll teach you how to do it, and it's like, right. uh, it, that's occurred in other formats where you haven't got sure. this idea of a god tier thing, and it's just mm -hmm. like, I, uh, I get you, I, mm -hmm. I see where it's going, yep. I get the idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, totally. so no, re no renting is involved. <laughs> True. No, yes. no, 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 no rentals. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on, a bit of a mood whiplash here. Moving over to technically not a second season, but still part of a an existing franchise. Cells at Work Code Black. Um, so for those not familiar, Cells at Work is a franchise in which the cells of your body are represented as actual people. Uh, and so it's red blood cells and white blood cells and so forth going out about their business. Um, the previous cells at work were in a relatively healthy body. This one is not. Um, yeah. so, th so the cells are hard at work in this particular body, and wow. <laughs> this, th this was dark to a level I did not expect yeah. out of this franchise. It was far more eye-opening than like, the original cells at work, where it's like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, the platelets. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just yeah. Oh goodness. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, uh, the white blood cell was quite interesting in in her uh, katana mo maneuvers. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it went into like full on like catastrophic issues. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. like didn't happen in the first season. You had like some sort of minor in issues going on, and this was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, you might find yourself. Choosing the salad instead of the burger after watching Cells at Work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but I will give them mad props for doing cells. doing it this way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you you know, there is a Cells at Work season two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I have not I've not started yet. But it, I'm presuming more of the, sort of the same kind of stuff where it's going to be all the kind of cute characters that we like, and there's going to be some bumps along the way and things, yeah. and we need to learn the systems of the body. Mm -hmm. So to, to take this and be like, well. Let's just look at the like catastrophic scenario here yeah. and see what goes on. And be like, good on you because you made it compelling. Totally. Without being like, oh, it's just you know, it's just derivative of the first thing. Who cares? It's mm -hmm. like, no, this is this right. is compelling. Yeah. This is the compelling watch. Absolutely. Um, and I always think something that, that takes a premise and um, kind of goes serious with it. You kind of asks, okay, given this setup, if we put it in this situation, what would actually happen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, totally, totally. Um, speaking of health and disease, moving on to Dr. Ramune, Mysterious Disease Specialist. 
um, which was one of the most Shonen Jump uh, anime of the season, um, because it's about a mysterious disease specialist, a guy who goes around and cures people. Think Mushishi, think um, uh, Holic, think that kind of thing. Um, Bakemonogatari. Bakemonogatari. Um, so you have those, you know, people have strange problems, and Dr. Ramune shows up to resolve it. Um, this is kind of like an anime version of House. That's actually, yeah, but, not, not too minus, bad. Minus yeah. the, uh, minus the opi- opioid <laughs> and, and the caustic behavior. Yeah, I mean, he's fairly caustic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's fairly uh, 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 pervy as well, so you add True. that into there to, uh, mm-hmm. as a factor. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely there. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Um, the premises are pretty weird. Yeah. Um, first episode is about a preteen girl who cries condiments. So, like, mayonnaise and soy sauce oh, from, comes out of oh, her eyes. No, yeah. No, yeah. No, um, no, yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. It, like, hurts. Like, it's painful, right? Yeah. Well, well, I would imagine. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Passing then, mayonnaise out of your eyeballs would not be <laughs> the most pleasant experience. Much less soy sauce. Uh, Ow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, it's one of those, right? Where it's not meant to be, like, Serious, realistic. It's meant to be more metaphorical, um, and uh, and I say very shonen. I, I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean it just has that kind of vibe of weird problem of the week, kind of goofy main characters or, or oddball main characters, yeah. um, and they solve it at the end of the episode, and you know bicker a little bit and move on. A lesson has been learned at the end mm-hmm. of the episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't Which carries through. Mayonnaise. I mean, I've, I've seen through into into episode two. I finished yeah. that, and mm-hmm. it's yep. It's it's. Disease of the day, mm-hmm. or week, yep. if you will. And, yeah, you will learn a lesson at the end of it. You know, whatever happens, there's a particular cause. You can either face the cause and fix the problem, or you can ignore it and perpetuate it. And, yeah. ta-da. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I got you. Well, you know, if I was crying mayonnaise and soy sauce, I'd want to figure out real quick <laughs> how to solve this problem. Well, if it was okay. Cupy, I'd make sandwiches. And if it was soy sauce, I'd just cry over my rice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. It, it works, you know. Tastes like sadness. <laughs> delicious sadness. Oh no, Steve, <laughs> Steve did a spit take. Speaking of sadness, let's talk about X Arm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw this one. Oh, oh. And, it, I, and, it, I, and it's not the story that's sad. No, no. So X Arm was a Crunchyroll original. Um, with Something. Square, I, 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 oh. I, I don't know what budget Crunchyroll gave them. Um, Did, was there a budget? Oh. I mean, I mean, Jesus. Um, I would like, I was like going, okay, wait a minute. Am I seeing two cell, two D, three D? What is going on? And then yeah. just like the, uh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. Yeah. They um, cut the budget after God of High School. They're like, nope, we're not. Nope. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> to be, to be clear, what happened here was, um, the director has never made an anime before. The no, really. Yeah, um, the action designer had never done anime before, so he filmed really? the live action actors and then told the animators to just copy that. Oh, um, it was just it was this whole bizarre combination of bad decisions, um, and so and so like this, I don't think the staff had had really done much. Like they they'd done CGI before, but it was like commercials here and there. Um, so they just were not ready for the kind of scale of a weekly animated series. This is like hiring Andrew Lloyd Webber to make Transformers. (laughs) 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 There are things you're good at. Cybertron! Stuff you're great at, stuff you're not so good at, and stuff you should stay away away from with like a 10-foot clown pole. Just stay the hell away from this. And to be clear, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I was just like, going, "Oh wow, okay, so this is Akira, basically." Oh wait a minute, the main character's name is Akira. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right. it's all pretty, right. yeah. And um, his brain is in a brain case, so we got Ghost in the Shell. Okay, what other mm, cyberpunks can we throw in here? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and what's sad is like, like the character models could be done well. Um, yeah. you know, the, the artistic design in general is minimalistic, but could be done effectively. 
Um, but just nothing has any weight behind it. Everything's just kind of, you know, flying around the thing and just kind of, they just land. And it's just, mm, it's very frustrating. And then, like you say, sometimes there's a 2D character sitting next to a 3D character. And the 3D character is like on twos. And the 2D character has barely any animation on it. And it's like, this, this is moving all the time. This isn't. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a shame. Um, and as Steve says, like, the plot isn't there either. So it's like, oh. It's a, it's a 4 a.m. and you're drunk and you got nothing else to watch. <laughs> I'm not even sure that. <laughs> it's... Yes. I, it's more of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 with your friends anime. I yes. Think. That, yes. yes, that would yes. work out really yes. pretty well. Yeah. Just have fun with it. Um, let's move on to something a little lighter. Um, um, although with some interesting sort of other things going on. Let's talk about Gek Idol for a moment. Yes. Okay. Um, so Gek Idol is an idol series. Big surprise there. Um, about uh, a group of girls all involved in a... Um, uh, in an idol group, um, but the it's set in this sort of not quite post-apocalyptic environment, but a a world in which these disasters have occurred. Yes, um, right. and the, you know, everyone's trying to rebuild, and there's this special kind of theater um, that does like these holographic sort of you know, uh, but perfectly realistic you know sets. Um, and allows for folks to seem like they're flying and so forth. Um, and the main girl wants to be part of the whole theater thing. Um, and it's about her getting involved in that theater, and there's clearly more going on. Um, like there's an android, apparently? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I, so when I watch this, and, you know, and, and you, know, I almost, you almost, like, I'm sure that as the series goes on, they'll talk more about, like, the apocalyptic things that happen. Mm-hmm. But but you really gloss over it. It's just like oh yeah, there's a big gaping hole in Tokyo where I have a would what used to be, and yeah. you know. So we're we're we're, we're just going to talk about Alice in Theater right now, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know the girl who who becomes really enamored with being an actress in this like best way I can describe it is like 4D immersion that's yeah out now, but like ten times that, mm. and she wants to be an actress, and her friend who didn't make the auditions doesn't want her to be an actress for probably some you know other reason mm-hmm. but um, her parents were killed by you know, actors they're, they're, yeah, <laughs> they're all hit by a truck um, truck couldn't the yeah, actor truck couldn't. killed truck all of them, them. Yeah. <laughs> it was all it was all truck couldn't. but one of the things that, that actually grabbed me with this and, and I'm not much of an idle anime watcher mm-hmm. is that it, this was like probably the first idle anime that actually and then actually the next idol anime that's in here in, in this mm. list, um, you know, kind of got me too a little bit, which was um, reminded me of certain things about what I used to do for a living before COVID, ah. uh, working, working in theater and stuff like that, and mm. work and talking how like it's just like a really shut in theater <laughs> with like you know mm. minimalized right. budgets and things like that, mm. and it was just kind of interesting to to see that because I. Like I say, I don't watch that much idol stuff, so you know you don't really get that kind of back mm-hmm. idea of, oh, here's this adult, adult entertainment guy who's like, okay, oh, I'll, I'll we'll pay talk you. about that for a second, yeah, Alice you in know? Paradise, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, I'll I'll be your I'll be your whatever, and that's mm-hmm. you know all sketchy and clearly there's something going on with him, mm-hmm. yeah. but um, but it just kind of reminded me of what what yeah. I used to do. I was just like, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting, but I really like to get back to the big gaping hole in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what's going on there? Um, that was one of the things that actually really caught my eye, if you will, about Gek Idol, is the fact that, like, um, uh, you know, th- this woman takes the, the, the girl to this guy who clearly runs a, an, an adult business and who is their sponsor, like, or one of their sponsors. Um, and it's like, oh, okay. Um, and, like, she, she bumps into a, a couple of people coming out of a love hotel. Um, you know, this is part of that world and just a thing. So it's interesting to have that, especially in episode one, just kind of worked in. Yeah. And, and at first I was just like, as I'm watching this and that, that scene happens, I'm like going, wait a minute, this should not be available to everybody. <laughs> What's going on here? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it should be pointed out, I mean, uh, this is one of the unusual things, is that 
I don't think they sing. Yeah. I think it's just acting. I, I didn't see any singing in this episode. Well, no, they did when they when the four D screen changed mm-hmm. into the beach. Oh, you're right. You're right. And then you're the absolutely right. Yeah. Rocket ship mm-hmm. and wreck and stuff yeah. like that. They were singing. Yeah. Yeah. It just that was kind of like the tail end of like, okay, this is just a thing that's going on over there. Mm-hmm. It's not really yeah. you know, super focused in on. You're absolutely right. So singing is definitely it'd probably be more like musicals as opposed to yeah. like yeah, right. musical yeah, yeah, cool. Um yeah, interesting. Um and I would like to have seen video of Steve when he was doing this kind of stuff because mm-hmm. Steve as a high school learning to act and sing girl would have been fantastic yeah. to watch. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No. Sail, Sailor Moon outfit, the whole thing. You could look, mm-hmm. you know. No, no, that that is nightmare fuel. <laughs> that, that is, that oh, is. that was the name of the idol band? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was <laughs> Nightmare me, Fuel. Me and my fellow cross tries to Sorry, Steve fuel. Gerhard. <laughs> Sailor, Sailor Moon. A burlesque you Sailor. never want to see. Sailor Moon? <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, all right. Um, let's oh. let's keep the lightheartedness going with Heaven's Design Team. Um, oh, I thought you were gonna say Wonder Egg. You know, <laughs> we'll get to Wonder Egg. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, oh, thoughts. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm, but yeah, so Heaven's Design Team um, is one of these sort of oddball concept, uh, originally manga, I think. Um, the idea being that. Uh, God's gotten tired of creating all the animals. He created the first few and then got, got sick of doing it. So he's outsourced the job uh, to this, this company of a handful of people who now think up new animals and submit them for approval and then d- d- design them, test them, and then, you know, uh, we see if they actually get approved by God. Um, I'm so- sorry. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> listening to this. I'm like going... I'm like, oh my god, I hope Peter doesn't watch this. And, and it's clearly, <laughs> it's clearly, you know, an editor at a at a manga magazine saying, can we do an, a, a manga about, like, animals and biology? Like, can we do a manga that, that, that touches on this thing? What premise could we come up with to explain why giraffes are the way they are? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, basically, yeah, it's them, Yeah. <laughs> So it's them coming up with ideas for animals, and then what I, what I like about it is they then go through various iterations of, given this idea, what wouldn't wouldn't work sort of biologically and physically. Yeah. Um, so you talk about, like, you, with a giraffe, you can't just have hugely long legs because then it can't drink, um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, a, um, again, one of those things you just have to accept the premise as is. <laughs> Don't think yeah. about it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nice that they, you know, highlight once the sort of design and everything else is done they highlight the actual animal and the, i think what are they, they have the little breaks in between the sort of mini segments mm-hmm. where it's like animals in the real world and then they show you what a koala looks like mm-hmm. and it's like oh well that's cute mm-hmm. yeah it's, it feels educationally and entertaining at the same yeah so it's and edutainment <laughs> exactly Edu- edutainment. Edutainment. edutainment they also they also do a nice job of representing the idea of being a contractor for an external client and you know, have, having to go through multiple iterations or just not really knowing what the client wants. What does he mean by that? You know, and well, all those sort of just problems. imagine the contract negotiations with God. <laughs> um, eternal salvation in return for this? No! Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or it, ultimately, the client is never wrong. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Ever. Yep. Ever. Mm-hmm. Never ever. Exactly. Um, so, shifting along to another fun <laughs> show, uh, Horror Mia. Love it. Yep. Love it. So, one of A the. Nice, nice reboot. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the sort of. I, I think it's possibly like the most classic shoujo anime this season. Yeah. Probably um, why I like it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I. So I watched it, and I, I knew it was getting to a slice of life, and we were kind of talking about it before we, we, we got on, and, and I didn't realize it was an OVA prior um, to this. Mm. and uh, But I just really liked the, the, the whole, you know, obviously, you know, some people different from outside of school 
and it was just interesting how they kind of interact and how this this girl wants to be mm. basically a, a housewife and you know kind of thing or you know not necessarily be a wife but oh, yeah, yeah you know do go th- you know go through those motions and how they just feel very comfortable in this relationship and yeah. just how this is going along and the guy is like you know you you learn how much of a doofus he is and and you know and then going on about the tattoos and the piercings and how he has none of that in the school mm-hmm. and how he works around it and, and that kind of stuff but i just really loved it it just I don't know. It just seemed like the slice of life. Just like it's an absurd concept, but it seemed really natural to me. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. And yeah, it just it just really appealed. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's a nice, um, just something nice to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, when when after you watch Wonder Egg and you just go, yeah. oh my God, please, God, somebody help me watch watch this. This is I mean, this is a good. The OVA to to. was just a nice, gentle ride, and mm-hmm. it's like they did a good yeah. job at stretching this out into like mm-hmm. a, into a season, and it's it's very accessible, mm-hmm. yeah. Style. I mean, yeah. it's not breaking any new ground with how it's trying to look with three D. <laughs> 2d 3d integration none of that crap it is just one of those where you could just watch it you can enjoy the characters for what they are and it is a well you could do it as an easy lunchtime watch Mm. it's just something i'm not i'm not chomping at the bit to know more i'm just really enjoying what i've seen right now yeah and then i'll yeah it'll just play itself out and a lot happens in episode one oh hi yeah what i really like is you get i mean it's not like every single character shows up but like you get through all of the initial awkwardness of like the relationship and them getting to know each other and all that. So you kind of understand the overall kind of tone of their relationship uh, by the end of the the first episode, which I really appreciate. They're not kind of, you know, waiting until episode four for them to kind of, you know, nail that down. And it's not catastrophic. Yes. Right. So there's not like this just dump pile of like all kinds of crazy drama mm-hmm. it's like they actually pretty efficiently get things in the in the frame that they're going for mm-hmm. and they do it in the in, you know in the four corners of this first episode that so that when you get to the episode two you're gonna have a fairly good groundwork so now you can focus more on what the individual characters are doing because you kind of have a basic idea of what's gonna happen yeah, yeah. exactly i really appreciate that um and it should be pointed out just just the uh, one other thing. Um, so the the male main character is, as Steve mentioned, uh, fairly heavily pierced and tattooed, um, and you cannot show that in like you're not supposed to be pierced um, in school. Like they will actually have rules in the school rule book saying like you can have you know, girls can each have one ear pierced. That's it. Um, so his piercings are just like not allowed, and certainly the tattoos are a whole another issue. Um, so what would happen if that. they caught you? Expulsion, probably. So that would it be like serial expulsion? So your top tier high school you've applied to, you get into it, you've done well on your exams, they find out you're out. So yep. you just go to the next tier down, and, and then they say you're out. They, I mean, yeah, you can't deny possible. you education. Well, there's a oh, reason. Okay. There's a reason why there's a Cromartie High School. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. There's your answer. Mm-hmm. I thought Marty it was for gorillas, gorillas and Freddie Mercury. <laughs> and, and, and Mechazola. Yeah. Um, I mean, there may be... It's an interesting question. Um, it may get to a point where, you know, you would have to do something. You might end up having to go to, like, a trade school, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Like pay for like, it. I mean, like Cromartie High, you might get mm. bumped all the way down to yeah. a tier where it's like, okay, you're not really going to go anywhere in your life, but we're going to get you the required minimum education, yeah. and then here's your certificate, get out. Yeah, yeah, you'll get the paper, and that's <laughs> it. Totally. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I liked it. It was fun. Which, of course, saying that now, I have no idea in, in current U.S. world Mm. What if you had tattoos? Somehow your parent authorized you to get a tattoo. Right. I'm assuming most tattoo parlors wouldn't. If you're like 16, mm-hmm. would you get? Would would an American public high school kick you out? If you I had don't a tattoo? think so. No, I don't no. think so either. No, no. That, certainly not the, the not the piercings. I know plenty of people have tons of piercings. Yeah. yeah, I think it was one of those things where was, as long as it's not on like your forehead and wasn't like you know explicit. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that to be said. Yeah. <laughs> Not some foul language or, or epithet, if you will. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, all right, shifting from shoujo to fantasy epic action, let's talk about Hortensia Saga. Um, boy, is this based on a video game. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Whole bunch of characters. It is... I, and I don't really know how much else to describe it as kind of somewhat over-the-top fantasy, epic fantasy. I, it, it felt f- fairly standard to me. It, it, there wasn't mm. anything egregious about it. it. You know, it was just, uh, you know, here's the kingdom. You're the hero. Here's the, the, the person who has the secret that everybody can apparently see but the hero. And, mm-hmm. you know, and... Um, and Jonathan Frakes dies in this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> William um, Riker doesn't make it. Mm-hmm. No, he does not. Shit. Darn the luck. Um, but uh, but I just it, it it was. I liked it. Okay. I, mm-hmm. I don't think it's something I'm going to pursue. But mm-hmm. um, but you know, points of it, I was kind of like, I, I was like, okay, I know that there are plays that like Moliere wrote, wrote a bunch of plays where. The character, one of the characters, is hidden as a gender mm. from a woman to a boy, right. mm-hmm. and you know that kind of thing. So I know there's a suspension of disbelief, but at a certain point, I would think that somewhere along the way, living in the same house mm. with all those people, that there would be some moment that you would figure out, like even if it's just opening the door by accident when walking mm. in the bathroom, but oh, 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 okay, you're not my brother, mm. you know, kind of a mm. moment, you know. Um, but yeah, but beyond that, it, it's just, you're right. Well, it, it, it feel it really does feel like a video game at certain points. Well, we had this the discussion when we watched it this afternoon about there, there are some telltale signs to who, who people are by certain, you know, accoutrement that are occurring mm-hmm. on their head or their ears. So that you can kind of sort of follow along like that, but it's other than a really, a very good usage of the 3d background effects and yeah. Music, yeah, muting kind of how that mm-hmm. looks, yeah. so it doesn't stand out in like stark contrast to the background and the and the drawn characters. Mm-hmm. It's not really breaking any new ground. Yeah. So you know, yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's entertaining. Mm-hmm. It's I, solid. I, you know, it's, it's solid. not one of those mm-hmm. things. I'm gonna go screaming out the door. It's a tour de force. I've never seen better. <laughs> and next book entry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm sure they they are hoping it is. <laughs> like, oh please, please. Yeah. But if you're looking for, you know, um, big action, epic fantasy you know, adventure stuff, that's totally going to get you there. Yeah. Um, I have questions yeah. about the, that compound armored bow thing. Yeah. How that yeah. Works. yeah. But, you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, total props on the CGI. Like, the, the CGI yeah. sort of knight soldier characters never felt out of place. Um, it's like, okay, yep, they're there and they're doing their thing. They, and they do really smart things with, like, cranking down the, uh, the cell count. So they're not like butter smooth yeah. while the other characters yeah. are moving, which I really appreciate. Um, well, I think they did a tremendous job with muting the edges. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's one point where the the characters are all coming up and the army is behind them, mm-hmm. and the army is almost slightly gray, mm-hmm. and it's not just you know it's armor, <laughs> right? So it's not like mm-hmm. pink necessarily, yeah. <laughs> but that their edges are slightly grayed into mm. the background so that mm. you can tell it's a CGI character, but at the same time, it doesn't take away from your, your characters that are in the forefront where you're, mm. you're really mm. noticing the yeah. colors of their tabards and mm. everything, all of their equipment, and the people behind them are completely there, completely visible, but just so nicely, gently put into there yeah. that it's like, God. Ah, Good they, on you. They've gotten a lot better with um, the cell shading, where it used to yeah. be, you know, you would say cell shade, and everything would have the exact same thickness of line, you know, yeah. no matter where they were, anywhere yeah. in the shot. And now they're getting a lot more subtle where, okay, now it can look like they're in the background or the foreground, whatever. Yeah. Totally. And that's uh, that's that's tremendously helpful in this, and it, it helps mm-hmm. to really keep things in good perspective. With yeah. Them, Completely yeah. unobtrusive, which is yeah. really nice. Um, speaking of CGI, I talk about eye dolls. So this one kind of, I couldn't figure out for a little bit, because uh, it's these four girls who are all who all want to be idols, and they're all you know, sitting there in their room, chatting about wanting to be idols and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, oh, this is performance capture. There are four actresses in a green screen room, and they're all be they're all talking and doing the you know and standing up and walking around and doing the thing. 
and that's up the talking idol thing and then mm-hmm. setting it back down. Like, yep, mm-hmm. and it doesn't look bad. Um, and they clearly like you know tweak the the motion so it fits the uh, the the, the um, models and so forth. Um, but it's much more of a sort of um, little one room comedy kind of a thing where it's yeah. four girls, much like a radio drama, right? Where right. you just you got a couple different characters all sitting around talking and chatting and so forth, and it's gonna more that that vibe. Um, so I don't know where it's gonna go because there's <laughs> not. Too much you can do with that premise. Well, the um, dance, but... the dance scene, like when we mm-hmm. saw it, it yeah. reminded mm-hmm. me of Love Live mm-hmm. because those elements are there, the the song and dance routine and the moving around on the stage and stuff. <clears throat> but there's obviously budget difference. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Love Live, the School Idol series, just those dance scenes were amazingly done mm-hmm. and the choreography involved in it and the, the songs were catchy and a lot of you know, the visuals were good this it's nicely done mm-hmm. but it's not wowing it's not sure. you know there's not mm-hmm. everything going on around it where you're just like oh my gosh i can't believe i'm looking at this this is so amazing it's like yeah. Yeah. oh they're dancing mm-hmm. and there's cgi okay in a sense it feels like either if you're a fan of idols in general um, and you want a show that's a little more kind of behind the scenes of the girls kind of talking about, okay, how are we going to get, you know, people in for our next show, that kind of stuff. It's, it's fun for that. And obviously, you know, if you, if you like the characters, right, like that's going to be right. what keeps you going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, Jay is saying, you know, season for idols. Yeah, absolutely. Because next let's talk about Idly Pride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, so this which still was looks like Dolly, Dolly Pride. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Dolly Pird. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this is an interesting one. Yeah. It's um, different. Because it's all about this teenage boy who wants to um, make one of his classmates an, an idol. Well, actually, she asked him to, but, you know... Um, and you, you follow them doing that. And then he gets a phone call after she drives away at one point. Um, and a couple of years later, he gets back into managing idols because the ghost of the idol girl shows up to him. Was that a spoiler, Brent? This is all. This is all episode one spoiler stuff. Like no, this is not one. a spoiler. It's you. Have it's the to premise. Talk about yeah. it. It's yeah. Well, just don't you tell him to. that truck couldn't did it. Just, oh damn! Oh, damn it! <laughs> As if you couldn't guess. It was trunk coon. Yeah. It was trunk coon. Trunk coon. Mm. <laughs> trunk coon. How dare you? Strikes again. So yeah. Um, so it's kind of a ghost idol anime. <sighs> it's really see, interesting. Okay. So but for, that's different. For, that's yeah, a different thing. It's different, absolutely. It's different. It's different. But again, speaking from someone who doesn't watch a lot of these idol kind of animes, mm-hmm. I, again, I was watching it and I kind of liked the the story because ninety percent of the of the first episode really is about the mm. the girl asking him to be her manager to enter into this company to make her an idol, mm-hmm. and they become a team. And you know, there's there's you know, points where you're just like, uh, you know, where, where you see the connectedness and going on and, and that kind of stuff and not to, to spoil certain things, but, you know, you go on and you're, and I'm like going, okay, because, you know, it starts with, uh, you know, the, 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 the big group idol group about mm-hmm. to go on stage yeah. and he's looking up into the sky and he goes, mana, I hope you're watching. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, going, oh, okay. It's going to be one of those. Mm-hmm. And it is. Yeah. And, and and then it goes through there and then you know you, you get grabbed into this story a little bit and mm-hmm. I'm watching it and I'm like going okay I'm not really my thing but I'll watch it mm-hmm. and I get to the end and then it goes two years later I'm like going okay this is where we start meeting all the different girls from the mm-hmm. idol group and then the ghost idol shows up and I'm like going you should have oh my god I can't even repeat what I said <laughs> okay I, I was just like I was just like wow. I was just like really really I, I guess that was my reaction Okay. It's like really, really. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is the direction we're gonna go in. Mm-hmm. This is this is where we're gonna, this is where we're gonna go, mm-hmm. because it does not 
give you any indication that this is going to be a I'm a ghost idol and I'm going to mm -hmm. need your help to put this group together so that mm -hmm. I can do whatever it is that I need to do mm -hmm. as a ghost and what you need Go to do to as a manager. Oh, right, <laughs> idol Valhalla, where they sip, you know, eat Pocky and, and sip tea all day. No ambrosia need? Uh. No, no. Pocky, <laughs> Pocky, Pocky and green Pocky, tea. Pocky is ambrosia. What are you talking about? Ah. Um, <laughs> Gotcha. So yeah, um, I like that a lot, to be honest. I, I liked the twist. Um, I like the idea. I also like the fact that she's not a mopey ghost. Right. Yes. She's yeah. just kind of there hanging around, chatting with him the entire time. Um, so I think that that, that relationship's going to be interesting. I do agree. I hope that they do something with it. Um, I fear that she's just going to be kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better term, kind of like the, you know, the nagging wife stereotype. Where she's kind of there criticizing all the time or whatever. Right. Oh, you're um, doing that wrong. They need to do something else. You're not doing that right. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um, so hopefully kind of that relationship goes. And then hopefully, again, kind of there's some um, change as a result of that. I right. do suspect, and again, I have no idea. Um, once the idols make it, she'll go. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like, as I had mentioned, I had like an Anohana. Yes, of, yeah, very much like, so. Mm -hmm. Menma is, you know, fun. She's a, she's the Menma that they've always known. And then you get to that last episode, and it's just like, I need a lot of tissues. Mm -hmm. So, yep. I'm a little concerned that it might go there, and she's going to be like, oh, thank you. You've done everything for me. Bye. And be like, yeah. <laughs> no, don't go. <laughs> Which would be a nice change for Idol series. To actually, make us feel something. I yeah. think Ghost Idol in, in and of itself is a neat idea. I mean, we yeah. went there. We went to a different direction with Zombieland Saga. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're yeah, obviously absolutely. finding sort of things yeah. to do with idling that mm -hmm. will give us some interesting things to watch. Yeah. So good on them. Yeah. yeah. This is definitely the season of um, of tweaking the idol formula and finding new variations on that formula. Um, we're not done yet. I Chu, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, is also an anime this season. And good luck Googling that, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's boy. Um, it's exactly that. It is boy idols um, being boy idols, doing the boy idol thing in a boy idol training camp academy thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That basically is the, whole, is the show. The show. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Oh, like. yeah. Don't know, what, what's, what's hilarious is it, it's also, like, different boy bands, basically, and you get to meet all of them in episode yeah. one. There's, like, 20 teenage boys in this, uh, in this episode. And there's and no way to follow them. them. I mean, you literally would have to have sat down and just noted out who the hell everybody was. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it, what? And you know the fans have done that. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. No doubt it's source material that is somebody has, like, you know, post-it notes all over the manga or the light novel or whatever with everybody's name so that they know who they are, what group they belong to, and what their mm -hmm. affiliations are. Like, such yep. and such is such as somebody's cousin who's mm -hmm. also the next-door neighbor of somebody else. Like... So let me bring down the Tenchi Moyo um, dry <laughs> Yep. Um, you know, and, and that's the thing, is that this is going to be one of those things. And the, the, that first episode is very much, you know, paint by numbers. Um, but it is, yeah. it is very much that. Like, if you're, if you're into that, if you're interested in that, it's going to give you that right down the line. No complaints, right? It's just, it is that, that trope, that, that genre. The formula that works for the boy idol bands mm -hmm. is in full effect. Yep. And if that is your absolute jam, you are going to ride that non mugen train all the way to the end. Mm, exactly. <laughs> um, I wish you a bon voyage. <laughs> speaking of formulas and breaking them, uh, Kimono Jihen uh, yes. was one of the anime that kind of caught my eye. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, boy, this started out not feeling particularly special. Um, no. Animation was just kind of there. Um, characters yeah. were just kind of, you know, a guy coming out in the middle of nowhere, investigating these um, animal deaths, um, and then it takes a turn. <laughs> it takes a real big turn. Um, yeah. 
I, I again, I, I had the same thing. I was watching this, and I'm like, one okay, a cult type thing, and mm-hmm. you know, very Yu Yu Hakusho or you yeah. know, insert '90s occult anime here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even the animation was kind of like yeah. that to a certain to a certain point. Mm-hmm. And then you you get there, and then you see the one character who's like, you know, who's in the field, the kid who's trying mm-hmm. games looking at like, and he turns around, and you see his eyes, and you're just like. All right, so there's gonna be something going on with him, and right. boy, is there something going on? With him. <laughs> yeah, and and you go, and then and then you find out that there's more about it, and then just for those of you in chat land, this is not necessarily yokai. This is actually something else. Mm-hmm. This is um, kind of um, um, not demons or fiends or anything like that, mm-hmm. but people who are also have animal traits, mm-hmm. and that's right. Well, they, they mentioned about. ghouls. Ghouls, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's not exactly a straight up Eastern yokai kind yeah. of thing, right? It's yeah, incorporating fact, an element. Like they used the word oni at one point. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was, and when they when they start going down that route and and start going with them, and um, did 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 the detective kind of remind you of uh, what's his name from Bleach, the store shop owner with the hat? And the green with the bucket color. hat yeah oh yeah 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 he kind mm-hmm. of reminded me of him wow mm-hmm. okay yeah a little bit and mm-hmm. um except longer hair right and um and of course there was there are certain cheesy elements like like the you know the spirit gun which is actually looked like a 44 <laughs> magnum mm-hmm. that it was a desert eagle was it yeah. is that what it was yeah. that's uh, what it okay was. A desert a desert eagle where he appeared to be able to reload it by changing it back into his hand and back yeah. into a gun. And, but there was, you know... It's magic, Steve. Stop asking questions. <laughs> but I want to know. I want to understand. No, but it, it, it just... It, but it went dark. And just, like, I love how, like, there's a like, montage of, of the two characters crying kid that you know something's weird with. And mm-hmm. like they're by a bonding together. And there's that one moment where it's just like, Oh ha 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 ha! Wait a minute! You just killed a boar, like the kid. Yeah. Like, this, like there's this moment where they <laughs> see the boar and you see the two of them, and like and the detective's like ah, and then the next frame is like a guy going ah instead, but to the kid is the kid still holding like a bloody blade, and you're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's like a gardening but... a, a gardening <laughs> blade, and he goes off and kills yeah. like a large dangerous wild yeah. animal with like, mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. screw with this kid. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Right. Definitely not. Don't don't mess with him. Mm-hmm. But I, um, I like I liked how it transitioned from that village back to Tokyo. I I just love how that mm-hmm. worked out. And yeah, I don't want to spoil that for anybody mm-hmm. um, watching it Like, because I think this is worth watching. I think it's the one. It's been a while since I've seen an occult anime that that kind of grabbed me a little bit. That didn't seem like everything else that you. Ever I seen. think occult action. Is kind of yeah. the, the the catch words the, of, yeah. of this yeah. the show, um, and uh, and that was one of the things is that the <laughs> I think they saved all the budget for the action sequences because yeah. oh, oh yo, gosh God. those were beautiful they were mm-hmm. um, and and a lot of stuff around like like so f- for me I like watch a lot, a lot of like kung fu films kung fu films tend to think a lot about like positioning and making sure you understand what's going on in the, in the fight. And I really felt that in these, where, you know, I understood who was where, what was threatening which person, like, really right. well thought out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of those things where, not going to be for everyone, <laughs> definitely. No, no. <laughs> but, um, does some interesting things, yeah. I, like, I might give it another episode just to see mm. how much we develop out of this. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought it was... I thought it was interesting. I thought some of the dark element was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, being a sucker for slice of life rom com, <laughs> like, not what this is. Not nah. what this is. <laughs> That's gonna, you know, like yeah. so, like like watching Lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to be in a place mm-hmm. mentally <laughs> and physically and all other respects, <laughs> spiritually. Yeah, <laughs> to sit down and watch that, ingest it, understand mm-hmm. it, enjoy it. Yep. And be able to like know what's going on. It's like yeah. this one's not anywhere like Lane at all, mm-hmm. but no. it yeah. is certainly a time, place, and manner where it's mm-hmm. like I just I'm mean, gonna have to be in that mood to watch something along that line. Yeah. For all of you Halloween fans, 
this is mm, this is definitely yep. this is de- definitely for you. Mm-hmm. Yep, totally. Speaking of anime that I need to watch another episode or so to get a feel for, uh, LBX Girls is basically it's Mecha Girls. It's sort of Strike Witches, Frame Arms Girls. In fact, same uh, studio as Frame Arms yep. Girls. Yep. Um, so it's teenage girls who have you know Mecha parts attached onto them and fight battles, except people die. Yeah. I, yeah. I wanted more. I I wanted, I wanted more out of this. Mm, More death? No, not more death. (laughs) I Um, hate the cast. I wish they were all wiped out. Oh, Oh, (laughs) shit. Eve? (laughs) Trunk-coon. 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 The giant alien trunk-coon. It's like a taco (laughs) truck falls from the sky, (laughs) crushing the team. Oh, no. Um, I, 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 but I will say mm-hmm. that the first few minutes really grabbed me mm. because I knew what this was going into it. Uh, and, okay. and like in terms of like, okay, this is going to be not necessarily a mecha, but this is going to be a mechanized suit kind of kind of right. thing. And so I knew what I was getting into, you know, by the description of it. But okay. just having having this girl who like really knows nothing, she, it, they make it very clear that she, she's just of the sticks she doesn't really know that much mm-hmm. tokyo is just like it's a very confusing thing and i love the, the subway scene where they're showing her on the map and she's just not getting it yeah and because i can't tell you how many times in dc I've, I've you know explained to people actually i used to uh when i was doing um where to eat for otakon for dc mm. i do a whole segment on this is this is where you go this is where to stop you get off and this mm-hmm. is the thing because it can be very confusing. Oh yeah, and then you know, then this is the realize, bad neighborhood where you I hide do. everything you own. And this is the place this, you, go. you just don't go here. Don't go yeah. to Bridget. You know. Yeah. But you know, watching it, that made me chuckle. And then, like, I was kind of wondering how they were going to get her into the world. Yeah. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I, I'm sure there's more behind it. Mm-hmm. And I just think it was kind of interesting that she got the the mechanized suit. But simply by holding the, the character, yeah, yeah, you know, the kind of thing, the action figure, like the action figure, mm-hmm. and going into it and knowing nothing, and knowing yeah. nothing, yeah. And I just, and part of what I really loved was the fact that she thought it was all of the art game. I can't get my visor. There's no visor. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, but but I was surprised because you know it was very cute, and then you see the girls, you know. You know, in in the midst of the battle, she really yeah. is dropped in the middle of the battle. Mm, yeah. Literally. So, by the way, suspension of disbelief. She drops like ten thousand feet and winds up fine. Um, and then you see how she replaces, how she gets into the team, mm-hmm. and it's the one character that that dies that you see yeah. in, right, right right in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like going, but the thing that bothered me about that in the episode is that they never talk to her about that afterwards. Mm-hmm. They just said, you know, yeah, she's dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this yeah, is only episode one. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We don't have time to reflect yet. Yeah. And, I mean, you get the sense that that's not uncommon. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious where, where they're going to go with that. If that's just kind of like, yeah, every, you know, every, every fight or two, we lose someone. Right. And so, you know, but... Which is going to be very interesting if they if we if we lose someone every couple of episodes yeah. because they spent two and a half minutes doing the transfer sequence. Yes. Every <laughs> single yeah. member of the team and each One. of their of their respective. <laughs> yep. and, and 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 for you for you fans out there for you you know fan service fans. Oh, pie fans. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much emphasis oh. on how the, how the suit yeah <laughs> enhances yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's definitely there. Well, I mean, and that's what we we had talked about when we watched it. Is like I just the question is how much are we going to get the the characters that we know that we love mm. that we we develop an affection for mm-hmm. like Agam, uh, Agami got kill mm. where yeah you yeah, really yeah, yeah really develop yeah, an yeah. affection for the girl with the scissors mm. yeah she's kind of motherly she's really nice. And she dies. Spoilers. The guy who's, well, it's so many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, spoilers. Mm-hmm. But other characters that you develop that affection for. Mm-hmm. And it's like this, I'm slightly terrified because it's like, mm-hmm. I could see liking 
that character or that character yeah. and it would like it would suck to have this be the these are the things about war that you have to hate here's the character you like dead that one over there crippled for life like game of thrones yeah kind of. mm-hmm. yeah where it's just like yeah. and it's odd because nothing else about the show visually or tonally has that feel to it you know if if those scenes weren't there you would not expect any sort of death to happen in the show right but they just put it in there so i'm curious um, when and, you strike and, and the also, tone that early, you know it's going to be mm-hmm. more. It's not. That's you know, they've divorced yeah. us now from the idea that that cover art, where it looks like, oh, this is going to be fun. It's going to be great, a high adventure, all kinds of stuff. It'll be cute. It's like, Mm-mm. no, 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 mm-hmm. horrible death. Yep, <laughs> horrible death. And things that look like something out of Starship Troopers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said the same thing. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to one of the surprisingly few isekai series of this season, Mushiko Tensei Jobless Reincarnation. Um, so one of the more controversial shows, I would say, um, based on its original work. Um, interesting partly because if, um, <laughs> it's true, okay. um, uh, the main character reincarnates, like, as a baby. Like, as he is dying, he is being, you know, he hears his mother giving birth to him. Fortunately, you don't see that. Um, and, uh, and he it's pops a, out as a baby. It's enough. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and he pops out as a baby and is now, you know, doing that. Um, and so with he, full sentience. With full sentience, right. So he's, his, his whole mind is in there. He remembers all of his past life. And he's now living, you know, in, in this, this fantasy world. Um, I've actually read the first volume of the manga, I think it was originally light novels. Um, and the manga is pretty pervy. Um, so I don't know I how... I that tone. Yeah, and, I, and it's somewhat toned down in episode one. Significantly toned down in episode one. I don't know if there'll be more of that in episodes two, three, four. Who knows? Oh, you know there will be. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't, know how, I don't know how pervy it'll get because the main character is pervy. Pervy, right. So, uh, um, so- they just... Mm, well, if you dialed it for one, I'm going to guess that they, they took the entirety of that content. If it was burning mm. up in, like, nine, they probably mm. took it down to a six. Yeah, you know? I'm, yeah. Just, I'm hoping. Just yeah. to get it around the sensors, get it around the other issues that might arise mm. in other other licensed districts. And yep. Sail so, under the wire. Yeah, mm. so after Trump Coon did his thing, because literally Trump yep, Coon did, just, did his thing again. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's rebirthed, and, you know, he's... I mean, this is kind of for... How pervy it is. So the guy's born, and and I did laugh. By the way, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I did mm-hmm. laugh when he's born as a baby, and he's looking around, he's trying to figure out what what the heck's going on. And he yeah. sees this beautiful woman, young mm-hmm. woman, and he goes, "Ooh, boobs!" And you see these two little tiny <laughs> babies, uh-huh. and he's just like, "Wait, what?" And then he's like, "My God, there's so many things wrong. With this. <laughs> so many things wrong with this." But, and again, another part which made me laugh out loud, but then I was just like, why would you do this kind of thing? Mm-hmm. I've never read the, the, the light novels or, or the manga, so I wasn't really aware of it. Mm-hmm. But the, as a toddler, the guy, remember, he has full sentience, goes into the dirty laundry and puts pants yeah. over his head, crawls into the kitchen to look at the maid who's very attractive mm-hmm. and he's yep. got that really lecherous uh, grin and yeah. you know and you're just like <laughs> you laugh but you're just like going <laughs> oh that's kind of freaky <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> and that is that is the tone of some of the other things I've yeah. seen yeah so we'll, we'll see um I don't know um but I I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And one of the things I like about the show is um a, they did little things, which I think they do do in the manga as well, is that when he's being reincarnated, he doesn't understand what his parents are saying. Yeah. Like, they right. are saying yeah. words, but it's in some other language that he hasn't learned yet. So he's going to have to learn whatever this fantasy world's language is. Right. Um, and that's actually what I liked about this anime, is mm-hmm. that they, they show in the first episode, as a matter of fact, I was kind of a little disappointed that it ended. Mm-hmm. That, that whole process ended in one episode. I was kind of mm-hmm. looking yeah. for two or three episodes. 
four episodes of it. Yeah. Learning the language and, and blah, 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 to look, blah, 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 to look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then he opens up the book and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to read. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's skill. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like the fact that, I mean, in Knights and Magic, and I, I talked about this a while ago, that mm. he is a big gunpla nerd. Mm. And protagonist Kun dies, reincarnates, and you you meet up with him when he's 12. Mm. Full sentience, mm. and you get the understanding that the backstory is, oh, I was reborn as a baby, I knew what everything was going on, so it's taken me 12 years to get to, like, being almost kind of adulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then goes on to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so you see a lot of that. Wise man's grandchild mm. dies, reborn, you catch up with him when he's, like, 15 or 16. Mm-hmm. So you right. heard that he's been baby, toddler, full sentience, getting just struggling to get up to this point in this new life. Mm-hmm. The first time I've seen anything where the death and birth, rebirth cycle are meshed. Right. Yeah. And so he's hearing, you know, you have his internal dialogue as he's dying mm-hmm. and you're getting him hearing weird things said. And he's yeah. like, huh? What's that? And then he's hearing the sirens and the doctors mm. and people calling on the radio and then he hears these weird words again he's like am I, am I really hearing what is, I don't am I dying and so it's like this complete mesh where he slips out of our world mm-hmm. as he's dying and he's starting to reincarnate and then he kind of veers back in again mm-hmm. as the final you know clock ticks down mm-hmm. before he flips over entirely into it it's like I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever seen yeah reincarnate yeah. into mm-hmm. an alternate world that's ever done that kind of thing it's a fairly clean line mm-hmm. i think i'm dying and you know a slime dot again right stabbed oh i think i'm dying dark now he awakens where am i what's going on you know and it's like that's usually how it works and, and, and you're left with one little mystery where he talks about the two kids they right. say i wonder they if they yeah. did they yeah. make it and mm-hmm. then you wonder if they're going to somehow right. more show likely up. but show up in, mm-hmm. in this world yep um the other thing i really appreciate is the animation um particularly of the uh there's a moment with one of the spells he casts um <laughs> yes. there's a kind of epic moment and they give it the full treatment um oh yeah but just in general just you know like Facial expressions, characters moving, um, like he'll like um, uh, he meets someone new and he's being held by his father. And kind of the way he, he kind of turns away a little bit and kind of buries oh, his head. The, yeah, oh, yeah, the, mm-hmm. that was really well. So just, yeah, was well done. Um, so um, clearly a lot of attention paid to just kind of character acting, which I really appreciate. Um, yeah, and you know what? It just it strikes me talking about the backgrounds and saying how's you know some oh, vaguely, yeah. vaguely M- M- Monet kind of coloration in the far mm-hmm. backgrounds. Ancient Magus Bride. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of vaguely what it reminded yeah. me of, like mm-hmm. some of the design yeah, interior visually. elements of it, mm-hmm. totally. and then just their the backyard where you're looking out and you're seeing the fields rolling off. It's like mm-hmm. it's that kind of not sharp detail in <clears throat> in exactly things, mm-hmm. but just that wonderfully blended use of color and style and form Mm -hmm. that gave it that pastoral look spreading out like a giant oil painting like wow that's really well done it feels like a lived in fantasy world yeah not just you know oh it's medieval fantasies people live in wooden houses and um they have a maid you know there's there's i mean they have a maid but all the other kind of bits kind of feel feel thought through yeah um Something that does not feel thought through, but probably is, but was a an, uh, just an odd bunch of different elements, was Other Side Picnic. Um, yes. I liked it. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm liked not it. at all against it. I'm not at all against it, but it was, we talked about this before, um, it's one of those shows that has obviously a very distinctive premise that's not explained yeah. to you in episode one. Yeah. So there's still nothing, a, nothing is explained. Yeah. In so there's still a lot of weird things. So you you've got these two girls who are college students, um, and they apparently can move to this other realm, uh, where there are these strange creatures that can be defeated, and then you can like bring artifacts back from that and sell them to make money. Apparently. 
Yeah. Um, that none of that's explained. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't know how they transition. Don't know how any of that works. Um, we don't know why they can do it, how they can do it, all that. Yeah. Um, and we were talking earlier in, in the chat room about um, uh, folklore. Um, the monsters felt to me very much like urban legend monsters. You know, there's a yeah. thing that comes out, and if you stomp your foot twice and then turn away and then turn back, it's not there anymore. So, like, there's no internal logic to how any of them work. You just kind of have to figure that out or learn from somebody how all that works. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of frustrating in some ways because there's no logic to wrap your, your brain around initially. Um, but once you kind of get into it, I'm sure it'll make more sense. It reminded me um, uh, a bit about, of uh, Made in Abyss in that way. Right. Where you have this weird universe, but kind of the rules of it aren't really nailed down to you and kind of how all that is structured until you get into it. Right. And that's actually why I, I really liked it, was mm -hmm. that you're, you're thrown into this world and it's, what it is, is to me is that I, for a change, it was nice to be thrown into a world where nothing is explained and, you know, there's not somebody there saying, so I figured this out by doing this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then As you know, mage, Bob. And the mage told me that, you know, and exposition me, could. Like, Let me explain <laughs> everything <laughs> for you, and then you'll yeah. get what's going on. Oh, okay, thanks. So, get me up to speed. It just starts with this poor girl laying, like, in a puddle. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that she's about to die, and she starts talking about her student loan debt. <laughs> and that's not the only way that anyone's going to care enough to know, wait a minute, this girl's missing because she hasn't paid off her debt. This yeah. time. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, but then it goes on and, and you're trying to figure out, wait a minute, where is she, what is she doing? Because it, it, because that's the other part of it is it doesn't really start off telling you that she's in another world. Yeah. yeah. And and so you're going through this because when I saw that, I didn't read the description. I just saw, you know, kind of, you know, the, the title and that it was mm. the, the Isakai type of thing. And I was just like, oh, they're at a picnic and something happens. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. pesky ants, they it's, dropped it's, us it's, into it's, another holocaustic oh, kind of world. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. And then and then they go through the, these things that are not explained at all. And one of the things I love is that one of the girls shows up with firearms. And I'm like, oh, yeah. how do you... What? She goes, oh, yeah, we just find them laying around. Yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. I'm like, well, okay. And, and, you know, that that kind of stuff. And Well, when you plant a gun in the ground, it grows a gun tree, right? Yeah, right. sure. <laughs> oh, it's perfect sense. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's in, but in this but world, your, apparently. But to, but to your point, Brian, it, it it's it was kind of neat in in that the monster shows up, and they're able they're able to defeat it one time by doing one thing, and then they when they're back in our world, they kind of look it up and they find out that there's stuff online, and you come to find out that other people have been there before, so clearly mm. people are reporting on this. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, okay, we got plenty of this material to do to defeat the monster. And then they go back in there and it's just like, okay, there are other things that are happening mm -hmm. that may or may not help you. Yeah. And, you know, and then there's, you know, certain little mysteries. Like, apparently, the one girl's probably lost somebody in there and yeah. they're still looking for her. Yeah. And there's that really odd, brief flash of when that girl is, finds uh, finds the, the geek girl laying in the puddle mm. and immediately you, sh you see Ophelia yeah yes. laying, mm. laying in the puddle and so I'm really interested to see what, what, what that's all about mm. but yeah they literally she goes oh I know a person who buys these cubes and then we can get money and then the end of the episode is just like hey we're drinking a beer now you know I'm just like going where are we going? And I, why, why like yeah. this? Okay, well, I think okay. when you, I think when you look at the end of the episode, when she start when they're encountering things and they're trying to figure mm, out what's yeah. the next step of, of what to, how to deal with this, mm -hmm. a comment is made about you know you could go mad looking mm, at yeah. this, mm -hmm. and that is exactly why you're flashing to Ophelia laying in the mm, puddle is yeah. because in Hamlet, right. that's right. Ophelia, Ophelia loses her, her mind, damn mind, mind and throws herself in the river and drowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get thee to a nunnery. Yeah. I mean, you know, it could all be happening in black haired girl's head. You know, for all we know. Mm -hmm. So, definitely an interesting one. Um, definitely Yuri vibes. Um, if that yes. wasn't oh, obvious yes. from the image yes, there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They're just being supportive. Right. <coughs> a show very, that is very supportive. Yes. Very supportive. A show that is definitely not Yuri. 
is uh, Scar on the Praetor, or Project Scarred. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. It's very pretty, but it's definitely not Yuri. No, it is kind of the it opposite is... of Yuri. Um, mm-hmm. The other side of the spectrum. <laughs> Hot guys with guns and tattoos and yeah. little brothers and, and things. Um, and tough, manly attitude. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, living in in terrible parts of town with gorgeous apartments. It's oh that show, God. you know, because it's... they're tough and manly, and they like that thing. Yes, yeah. and then they like arranging flowers. Um, exactly. But it's, it's it's kind of funny. Um, the holy smokes! Who did they pay to render all of their backgrounds? Yeah. Because yeah. the level of detail and complexity, and the like artistic style of it. It's not just we're going to do 3D CG backgrounds. Like they match it to the style of the characters, yeah. so yeah. it looks gorgeous in detail, but it doesn't distract. Yeah, and not just entirely Scooby Doo, where there's like one great background, you're like, "Wow, that's right. amazing," and you see it like repeatedly. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You yeah. do see the thing that floored me was the high rise apartment oh. stack mm-hmm. with yeah. every single balcony. Every single, Every single apartment, apartment had a little, a little AC, AC unit, wind. Yep. and it's just all the way down, mm-hmm. and at the end, yes, you see it a couple of times, mm-hmm. but the rendering on it is stunning. And it's not like, you know, every single one has the AC unit in the exact same place. Like, there's variety right. to every single one. Yeah. And the lighting uh. effects on it that give, based on where the sun is, where the shadow falls progressively differently mm-hmm. up the, it's just like yeah wow. yeah did, did you like give like some meds to the people who spent all the time doing this so so, so, like, so come so, down after this like the, the budget for x arm ah yeah to this. this is where that went to uh, yeah where that went to. um <laughs> oh poor x arm they cheaped out it, to get this yeah. beauty of a, of a background oh. so so I, I i watched this and you know instantly knowing what what it was um but we're talking about the rendering of the backgrounds the, the only problem i had with it was, was the water scenes yeah yeah and one scene it looked placid and the next scene it looked like the, the waves were ready to go up and go we're gonna smash out <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah but but then you know you go on and they describe basically the town like basically so there's this ward i guess in tokyo that has become it reminded me of a story called um, a Batman story called mm-hmm. um, shoot. Um, basically they have to blow all the bridges to Gotham because Gotham's on an island oh. and it's been earthquake the plague the whole night yards that happened mm-hmm. to it and they just the United States government just said okay we, we've we're done with Gotham. Gotham is no wow. longer part of the United States. Mm. Escape anyway, from so, New York? <laughs> yeah, actually, no. It, it's yeah. kind of like that, actually. Yeah. Um, Seal it off and leave it there. In a letter, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, this, this they call it, um, I guess, B1? Uh, or mm-hmm. is that the neighborhood? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah. the ward is this part of the town that nobody goes into unless you're desperate and destitute and poor and whatnot. So it's, it's supposed to be a, a crap hole of the part of the city that nobody goes to. Mm-hmm. And it's a free-for-all where everyone kind of experiments and exports and imports and buys and sells guns and drugs. Yeah, and, lots of guns. And so, you know, all this stuff. And so it's supposed to be this crap hole, and then you go into this this wonderful coffee shop, mm-hmm. run by a, a group yeah. of a small group of heroes that I that I was like I was saying to Brad I, I would love to go into that. <laughs> and then you know then the again the kids, rendering in there was, oh, I know gosh. I mean it's crazy I mean it, and, and again it's like you see the books on the shelves but it's not like a blurry okay here's the books on the shelves it's like book book mm-hmm. book. The all show. the tea and, and coffee and on the show. I was going to say, the menu in, items, in like, glass. So you have to right, render the yeah, glass reflections yeah. and all that. Oh. So it's just beautiful. And then, you know, the, the, the main protagonist is apartment and his mm-hmm. <clears throat> kid brother. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all beautiful. They're yep. all beautiful. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a sec. And, <laughs> and, and you know, the, 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 the apartment, remember... You're in a hole, a crack <laughs> hole of the city, and this is what you see inside of these mm-hmm. apartments. This is a beautiful apartment. My apartment doesn't look like that. This is yep. what my apartment looks like. Okay. <laughs> you know? I, it's I'm all not, that I, otaku stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's my own little man cave. Anyway, 
anyway, um, so then you get into the beauty of, of all mm. the men because mm -hmm. you don't see a girl in this until about three quarters of the way. Yeah, the it's that. Yeah, and it's just one girl, mm -hmm. and 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 the boys are prettier than she is. Oh yeah, and 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 by the way, folks, don't take this around the wrong way, but this is definitely yaoi action mm -hmm. anime action as in gun fighting and stuff like that there's yeah, a, yeah. Lot gun, oh, yeah, yeah. a lot of gun a lot of gun kata a lot of gun mm -hmm. kata going on yep. there's a lot of uh you know just posing. a lot of action a lot of a lot posing, a lot of, yeah. posing. Mm -hmm. a lot of posing yeah and and my favorite is is you know like when one of the characters you know not to spoil it but one of the characters dies and he dies in this very luxurious kind of <laughs> and I'm just like going, you know, that's never going to be me. Yeah, I'm going to be walking down the street and be like, oh. <laughs> no, truck, truck coon will get truck you. Truck will get me. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, no truck coon in this one. Yeah. But it's, it's the, but you know, this is definitely BL and this mm -hmm. is definitely, definitely well, Yowie. And there's, and there's moments where you're just like, for God's sakes, just go ahead and kiss. That's the thing. I don't think it's BL. You know? I don't. I, I think that is kind of the implication. But I, I didn't see any... I think it's going to be a, lots of hot guys in conflict. Lots of hot guys uh, shooting each know. other. And lots of hot guys like who are bros, you know. But they're going to leave all of that for oh, the fan. We picture. haven't gotten the wave yet. True. Um... It's only 9 o'clock, so I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> hot, hot guys and their gunplay. Uh, I'm just gonna walk away from that till so, I mean, I mean, it's it's uh, as far as the animation goes, it's this you know, yeah, this is worth watching. This is definitely worth yeah. watching. And visually, very, something visually interesting, and there, there are, are some there are some little blips in as we had noticed in the coffee yeah. shop yeah. with mm -hmm. with a coffee mug. There's a little bit of blip yeah. with the two yeah. D three D integration, mm -hmm. but in a lot of the the gun fight scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've worked hard to integrate the 3D guns into the 2D mm -hmm. to make yeah. it function pretty well. And mm -hmm. if you, I mean, if you want to get nitty gritty and look, get really scope down in on it, you'll notice there's some inconsistencies with like hand design, fingernail right. kind of yeah. thing like that. But mm -hmm. it's like that's not the point of this. <laughs> it's yeah, a right. much grander yeah. thing mm -hmm. going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a it's a good example of where the, it's clearly a studio that is pushing the envelope kind of visually an integration of CGI backgrounds with um, yeah. uh, uh, characters, and they're definitely succeeding, right? Like, they're making yeah. mistakes here and there, but that's just what happens when you're trying something this uh, this um, um, difficult, frankly. Yeah. Like, it's Yeah, it's yeah I mean, impressive. if this is, the, if this is the, the first shot at what they're doing, mm -hmm. this, the next shot's just going to be... It's going to be really crazy good. Crazy good. Because mm -hmm. they put... They did put... A lot of effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot. Imagine this is episode one. It, it, right. Yeah. Maybe yeah. every single dollar was used. <laughs> and then after this, it's like no offense, but it's going to be like crayon shinchan. We're like, what, the, what happened? What happened here? No. This isn't what I anticipated. It's home videos from uh, from Adult Swim late night. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um. All right. Moving on to a non isekai. Maybe a quasi isekai anime series redo of Healer. Um, so I have thoughts on this one. Um, basically, this is a world in which the main character is a healer, um, and he's had a rough time of it. Um, he has been um, uh, abused uh, throughout his life. As a healer, whenever he heals somebody, he relives their experiences. So he relives the trauma of whatever caused them to be hurt, um, which is very you know difficult for him. Um, but because healers are so valuable, they are let's just say very tightly controlled. Um, and so, and again, this is kind of what happens in episode one. It builds up to a point where he decides to rewind time to when the um, to when he was just starting out. So that he can basically arrange it so he doesn't get screwed over by the people who are screwing him over in this timeline, if you will. So he's going to arrange it to, to you know, make sure all that doesn't happen. Um, it is also an etchy series. 
very etchy series. Um, there, there's Shadow Coon? Is that what it might be? Um, just sudden large areas of shadow suddenly appear um, in, in various scenes. Um, and it's weird because, like, he, he goes back in time, he starts doing this thing, but there's this really uncomfortable revenge fantasy aspect to it um, where it's clearly just like, you know, um, I'm going to get all of you. And I'm just going to make sure all of you are miserable. Which is just not the kind of thing I generally like to see in a protagonist. Um, and so just the overall tone and premise left me uncomfortable. Um, neat, com- neat, com- neat concept, neat premise, fine animation, you know, and so forth. Um, but just that kind of idea was just kind of weird. So it's, I think it's one of those things where you kind of either bounce off that concept... Or if you can take that concept and you can, can take it for what it is, you know, and you're okay with that, then you can kind of move on from there. Well, that's what I, I liked when we talked about it. Like, I liked mm-hmm. that concept early on because Tatadu Yusha, the, the shield hero, mm-hmm. watching that and watching the injustice on Naofumi mm-hmm. build and build and build, and it's mm-hmm. like... I found myself swept into that where mm-hmm. it was like as mine and the king did their thing Mm -hmm. i was getting like blind rage by the time like things finally started to turn around so it's like this immediately tapped into that where Uh. it's like okay here's a dude who's just like getting a raw deal Mm -hmm. and things have gone like totally off the rails and it's nothing to do with his fault Mm -hmm. he's supposed to be a valuable member he's supposed Mm -hmm. to be a valuable contributor to this hero thing and he's treated like crap and you know what good he's gonna go back and he's gonna make sure that these people respect and understand him and you know mm. the only way he's gonna do that is to break him mm. i'm like good see good. i i don't like I'm that like... because that's future crime right like that's oh, what i'm gonna put him in jail for future crime i don't know it's, it's like you know <laughs> tom cruise showing up hey. yeah see I, I i don't like the idea that you know because in this other reality you were bad to me i'm gonna punish you here it's like well but they haven't done that right and so. we don't know whether yet he learns a valuable lesson in that, you know, the wheel comes around for him, too. Mm-hmm, if he right. goes crazy revengey, mm-hmm. he might end up it coming around and recognizing, oh, crap, right. I've spent all this time doing this, and I, I'm the one who needs to repent and find mm-hmm. a new path now that I've had yeah. a second chance. Or ho- easily that chance. Or hopefully some of the characters will, you know, not be a-holes to him. And right. he'll be like, oh, I don't have to wreak revenge on them. Right. right. So we'll see. It's like uh, I maybe, can make or, some other choices that change the outcome. Mm-hmm. Or maybe yeah. Truck Coon can make a special appearance. Yeah, just exactly. Could be. Solve and, everything. And, and Demon I, Lord Truck Coon. Huh. And, and, and I agree in the chat. We, we need an anime series where somebody is isekai into Truck Coon. Oh, yeah. Minority you know, Report. Then, That's what that was. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Truck Coon's getting his, getting his or her or its, whatever mm-hmm. your particular yeah. pronoun is. Um, there, the anim, Truck Coon anime is coming. Somebody yes. out there is making it. It could be a mm-hmm. doujinshi right now. Mm-hmm. But it's going to get an anime. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, so I have no good transition for this. We're just going to talk about Skate the Infinity. Um, <laughs> I think you could just have Steve and his skating ways do some radical <laughs> intro for it. Come on, Steve. Radicalize me. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Skate the Infinity. Yeah. Radical dude. Yeah. Yeah. So as we were talking before, before uh, uh, coming online, so back in the day when I was a, a mediocre skater dude, mm. doing this kind of stuff, doing snake runs, which is going down a garage. Oh, and wow. It's kind of, it, you know, you, you ride your board and you go down, you're basically sorry at the top and you're going down, you know, the circle and, you, and mm. you know, it's a spiral and you go all the way down, and it's just like you hope it's not going to end up like Max Headroom where you, you know, pile into the mm-hmm. to the, to the guardrail to the thing. And, nice, yeah. nice ancient reference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, you know, you go down, and so that that's what this, this, this uh, anime kind of reminded me of, of just like this absurd, you know, 80s, 90s BMX skate mm-hmm. snowboarding kind of thing where, you know, everyone's just kind of just radicalized and, it's like this, like special, unique kind of trail, whatever, and you're going down it. And you have to win it somehow, or whatever. And then there's the one outsider who comes in, you know, and this one where he's he's a snowboarder. He's never ridden a skateboard before in his life, but he's a snowboarder. 
So mm. he kind of knows, and then he becomes a prodigy. He's able to do Kobe Instantly. Bryant's off of it. You know, he's just yeah. like, he's just like, wow. Like, you know, and going up against a guy who looks like the Joker. Mm-hmm. With, with with like little, you know, M80s that he throws around. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, mm, okay. But he's that not Gene Simmons? No, not Gene Simmons. That, yeah, it would be cooler if he was Gene Simmons, True. actually. And, uh, but yeah, doing the, you know, when you do this, it, it, it just reminded me of just me being, you know, stupid and on a skateboard and going too fast and like craning the wall. <laughs> so, but, you know, <laughs> but it was just so, it, it put everything about it was just like, I mean, you could literally take this anime, take it back in time to 1985 mm. when this stuff was really getting, getting started and dump it in 1985 and everyone would just be like, yeah, that's it. Nah. That's the impressive thing about this is that like, I, I don't think you make a skating anime and go small with it. You know, no. you know, if you're gonna make an, a skateboarding anime, it needs to be bold, it needs to be brash, it needs to be yeah. radical to the extreme, and they they go there. Like they they push it, they make it ridiculous. I use the word absurd. I think it's a great yeah. The, the word for this um and so if you're into that you know if, if you take it for what it is it's great fun well i yeah. think it's certainly something you can't you could have uh it would tell me swim club free mm-hmm. you could have a swim club you could have a ping pong club you could have a mahjong club mm-hmm. you could have volleyball club mm-hmm. yep Skateboarding? Uh, right. You get some kind of really crazy progressive Japanese school. A skateboarding no. group. Mm-hmm. So by its very nature, you are already setting this up as like, wow, you know, this is a group of people who are really aside from other people that are, mm-hmm. you know, into these club things. They're these radical folks on a like different path. They're cutting their own line out there, doing their thing. It's like, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's the whole exposition at the beginning of, of, of the anime, which is like, the guys, it's like, people have what they love. They do this, that, and the other thing. I live to skate. <laughs> exactly. The call to adventure. I live to skate. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of skating, let's talk a bit about Skate Leading Stars, oh. um, which is about the very not real sport of <laughs> skate leading. <laughs> Um, but sadly. should be real. Should be. I, I know. Like I watched this and I was like, is this a real thing? No, it should be. Um, the choreography required to do that, I, again, I, I, I think would be yeah. would be phenomenal yeah. to get five Absolutely. or so people all doing stuff with sharp blades. So, yes. so when, when I was watching this and they were trying to explain what this is, mm-hmm. and I'm a big Winter Olympics fan. Like I, mm. I like it over the summer. Olympics. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I did, I'm trying to listen to this concept and it, the way that they structure the concept when they talk about who the lead is and then the mm. other two, you know, two the positions. Wings and the, the guard. wings and the guards. Mm. And the guards. You know what they're describing? A, a rugby. Team. Oh, I'm sorry. Rugby. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Rugby. Because so mm. the center guy's your, 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 it's called a hooker position. Mm. And the, you have your wings and you have your guards on the outside. Gotcha. And they all have spe- they all have specific uh, uh, functions, huh. and your yeah. and your your um, the the lead in this is supposed to be the person who's spry and light, and mm. you know, able to do the jumps and leaps and stuff. Like and, and in rugby, it's your smallest person on your team mm. who can yeah. in a in a um, scrum in a scrum yeah. get you know get the ball, hook the ball with their with mm. their legs. But um, <clears throat> so I'm. I, I'm I'm watching this yeah. and I'm just like thinking to myself going, what if this was happening in real life and all I could see were a bunch of guys just like Rugby on ice. Rugby players on ice. And that's all I could see. And I was just like, oh yeah. my god. I, 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 we, have, we haven't we have yet from mentioned Melbourne. You Sydney <laughs> bastards are all gonna go down. I should Here mention, we, go. we haven't yet mentioned this is an ice skating anime. Um, <laughs> a bunch of guys <laughs> ice skating. Um, uh, we didn't. We don't. The funny thing is, we don't really get to the and th- this idea that, that skate leading is basically a uh, team figure skating sport, right? Yeah. Um, but we don't really see any of this. This is more about 
everyone getting revenge on everyone else, um, including a, let's just say, um, ethically challenged manager character, um, who no one should ever, like, spend any time with. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of those... It, He's a junior yeah. partner at Alice in Paradise. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. That, that <laughs> uh, idol, idol uh, sponsoring group. They're like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, it, even it, when, they show, when he shows up for the very first time mm-hmm. when he shows up, you're just like, oh, F you. Yeah. I, you know, you're just like, oh, ew. He's just kind of slimy. Right? Yeah. Mm. And, but, but, and that's one of the things that, you know, about this anime that I didn't like was like, how easily the protagonist just mm-hmm. fell into that. Like, he yeah. was just like, okay, you know what? I'm yeah. with you. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you really don't like the protagonist of this no. of, of this show mm-hmm. right now in yeah. the first episode. You're, you're just kind of like, you're used to brash. You're used to mm-hmm. bold. You're yeah. used right. to maybe misunderstood or person mm-hmm. being misunderstanding about what's going on around him. Mm-hmm. But then you realize that that's the setup of the arc. Yeah. This guy is just a jerk. Mm-hmm. I mean, he really is. Yeah. And, you know, it's the they try to make you feel bad for him for setting up the tragedy mm-hmm. at the very beginning. Yeah. You know, about the, his parents and, and the coach dying and mm-hmm. all this, that, and the other thing. Now he swore that he would never skate again if he lost that. Keep in mind that the character's like went nine. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. And then and then it just goes off into this weird tangent about how like the skate world works and how everyone's just like weird, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. You know, and then you, and then and again you have this weird kind of explanation of how this guy can do things he joins he doesn't join clubs but he does all these you know athletic clubs and he's mm. awesome at every athletic thing he does because he can imitate anything yes. that he sees he, he mm. sees it can do and, it and can do it and you're just like what? again what? with this what, yeah. <laughs> what? where's truck Kun? i mean <laughs> amazing, like, but he's amaz- amazing protagonist Kun. he does right. everything mm-hmm. yeah and I also that, like for the the skate leading that we've got this, you know, uh, not emotional super skater guy. Yeah, the Russian. Yeah. The Russian yeah. guy. And where in the hell is every this skate leading thing is supposed to be a lead and wings and guards and mm-hmm. we just we see like there are teams out there. There's teams of people. Mm-hmm. We see solo skating. Yeah. The entire That's episode. like all we see. We don't yeah. like where are you, where's your team? Where's where's mm-hmm. this guy with his team and now it's like, oh, you've gotta fight basically, you know, five people mm-hmm. and you've gotta now integrate with your, your team. It's like I guess that's coming. Yeah. We're just establishing yeah. that these two are going to be the ultimate, you know, rivals one another. Rival uh, Rival Kun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's a kun. But um, yeah, um, and, and obvious, you know, there are going to be the questions about Yuri on Ice, you know, the obvious comparison to that. Yeah. And I think what you guys are saying are exactly why this is different, is that it's really a revenge fantasy, initially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the, the main characters are not particularly likable to begin with. Um, and you so wouldn't it's... acknowledge me, so I hate you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. to have a guy come up and just not only trick you once... To try to get to talk to you, mm-hmm. then tricks you again into guilting you into showing you a, a fake thing, mm-hmm. yeah. and then and then you're just like, and then you go along with it, and you know this guy's a jerk, mm-hmm. and also you know, okay, this is just me personally, but if I were the protagonist and I walk into the the changing room and I see another guy tied up with duct tape, I would be like. Nope. Yeah. No, that, 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 door. That's the thing that happens in this episode. True. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It's okay. He's fine. And uh-huh. again, if we're writing this, you have somebody go, okay, you're a liar. You're in a, some kind of like skeezy, like revenge fantasy. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm okay. I'm not skating. I'm, I'm hanging out with people and I'm doing yeah. other sports. Mm-hmm. Screw you. Mm-hmm. Series of done. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? sure. Just because you're like agree to a thing doesn't mean you have to do this this is not like you're not even if you sign a contract you can break a contract 
Yeah, it right. might have consequences, but it's not. You're not going to die. Right. So if this is something right. unethical or illegal, you don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. story out the door. You don't get a franchise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just it, it. It's a. It was a very awkward first episode for those reasons. Yeah. Um, I can see it becoming a you know a, a much more um, engaging show as it goes on. Um, that was kind of off-putting, unfortunately. Um, what was not off-putting at all for me was so I'm a spider, so what? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, loved it. Mm-hmm. So loved it. So loved it. Girl reincarnated as a spider, like a well, spider monster, but still a spider. Um, it was so good. Oh. Which I didn't even realize. I watched the first episode, then we mm. watched it, and it's like I didn't even realize Brent till you said all of the the nuances to the reincarnation part yeah i didn't even realize i thought that this was like a completely separate thing into a brand new isekai world i didn't Mm. i didn't understand it was internally consistent yeah i thought it was like a drop in from somewhere else and it's like okay now this is how did she get from her world into Mm. this one where these things happen it's Mm -hmm. like nope 100% 100% correct. This is all internally consistent. Yeah. I'm like, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't realize that. So, um, we see this school teacher teaching. Something happens. She reincarnates, reincarnates as a spider. Um, we deal with all that, which, by the way, spiders eat their young. Um, yeah. So that's a whole thing. Yes. Devourer of kin. Yes. Or it is. Yeah. And then she has to, like, do that to survive as well. Um, hilarious stuff. And then you jump to all of these people, you know, in this, uh, like, royal mansion, interacting and talking and saying... Big party. And big party and so forth. And, yeah. and one of them says, oh, you're, you know, um, uh, Kazuki. Yeah, I am. What? 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 Right. And you, re- you discover the entire class has reincarnated. Right. So they're all in this new world, and some of them are adventurers. It, I I just okay. I'm, I'm one of the reasons why I'm so happy about this anime is because when I saw the trailer, I actually watched the trailer for it, mm. and I watched it, and I was just so happy with it because I was just like, <laughs> it's so different to me, so different, and I was just like, okay, this this looks this looks like a lot of fun, and it's short enough. It's it's just like you know, mm-hmm. the thing happens. You don't know what the thing is, but the mm-hmm. thing happens, mm-hmm. right? And they're they're all reincarnated, but she comes out of the egg, and you know. And, and again, it's her coming out of the egg, fully sentient about herself, and she's looking around, and there's all these other spiders eating each other, yeah. and the father spider coming in and eating, and, and she's just like going, you know, just like uh, trying to figure it out, and then she's going into game mode, she starts figuring things out, yeah. and then when they start talking about where she goes, oh, I gotta level up, I gotta do these things to level up, mm-hmm. and then she's trying, was it the appraisal? Yeah, yes. <laughs> which turned out to be totally useless. <laughs> totally useless, and she's just like, mm-hmm. "Okay, what is this? It's a wall." Okay, mm-hmm. I know. But what is Kabe. it? It's Kabe. a wall. Kabe. It's a wall. Kabe. It's a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, and and you just and then she goes on. She goes, "Oh, you know, I gotta eat. I gotta eat something." And you don't think about that. And, and then she eats. What spiders eat, what they catch, right? And she's just like, oh my god, this is so bad. <laughs> and, but she does it anyway. And so she's living the world and she's yep. actually fucking with it. Mm-hmm. That's the other part of it. Is yeah. like, there's a moment where she just goes, I gotta think this through. Screw it. This is my life now. Here we go. Mm-hmm. We're going into it. Yep. Well, I like that resignation to it. When, she's, right, yeah. when she just, it's not like, oh, oh, woe is me. What a right. terrible fate. I don't know mm-hmm. what to do. No, it's just kind of like, okay, this is how this is. I'm going to do this. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Yeah, yep. let's do it. Let's do it. I'm like, going to okay. eat that thing. I'm how gonna plucky. Kill it. How very plucky I'm, of you. <laughs> I'm going to make the web. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to kill it. And I'm going to mm-hmm. eat it. And I'm going to throw up. And I'm going to eat some more. Because yeah. that's what I got to do. <laughs> and then, so it's just this, like dungeon area. And you have the darkness and all this stuff. And it's kind of funny. And then it transforms to the scene where the other classmates Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just like very posh. Everyone's dressed up, and they're all fighting each other in this in this room. You find that you know some people are switched genders. Some people, mm-hmm. are, you know, they all look totally different yep. from yeah. what they were in the class. 
and you meet the teacher who turns out to be a beautiful little elf and everyone's just like oh you're so cute <laughs> and you know and they go through this and then they slowly pan towards the banquet table and you see this beautiful piece of meat and then you hear yeah. blah, blah. and just go back and you realize Wow, she got really short thrifted. Yeah. yeah then, mm -hmm. then she, she got did. the worst end of that. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't well, even know it yet. And I'll, I'll give them crap, uh, you know, props for the fact that, you know, we have now established that one of their classmates could be that pig. Right. It's on the side table. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, such and such when. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so it's a really interesting premise, um, really fun concept, and I agree in the, in the chat room. I wonder what the um, disaster was, um, like if there's something magical to it, or if there's something specific to why all that was happening. Just Meteor Kun. Could be, yeah, Meteor -kun. Meteor -kun. No, Truk <laughs> Trukun wasn't in this one. No, 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 no. But yeah, he did um, something it, far more intergalactic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I have to say the outro music and scene. It's just, I love it. It's just so, just so absurd. When I watched the trailer, I thought this was actually part of the enemy, but it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just. It's a very Agretzko, like, very, you were right yeah. Yeah. on the tone of it. Absolutely. Just going to town on stage. It's mm -hmm. like, it's just, cool. It's, it's very, it's just one of those things where it's just like, it's an it's a guy that makes fun of itself. And yeah. It's, mm -hmm. and, and does it in a cool way. And I just really, I'm just happy with it. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Yep. It is Absolutely. a fun lunchtime watch and good lightheartedness. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. I look forward to more of that. Until episode six, where it all gets serious. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Who knows? Um, where she takes on the environmental issues involved with spiders and spiderlings <laughs> and stuff. A show that definitely was not series, serious it was uh, Suppose a Kid from the Last Dungeon, Boonies, goes into the city or however that. that yeah, name moved to a starter on. town. Moved to a starter town. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Um, so basic premise: you have your your Mary Sue um, main your character, o Op Kun. Yeah, Op Kun, um, who goes from his town into the from his you know remote town into the big city, and it turns out actually he's like amazing at everything. Um, gotcha. Yeah, naturally amazing at everything. Um, and then there's just you know a lot of humor around like the people he meets and unexpected you know powers and all that kind of stuff. Um, very much like cute comedy. Yeah. Um, I'll admit, in episode one, none of the characters really grabbed me. Um, I didn't particularly like, like any of the characters. Um, but as a, and I, I don't mean this pejoratively, brainless comedy, um, yeah. it's very much that. Mm -hmm. If you want to laugh, this is just... A nice yeah. Yeah. little mm -hmm. thing to laugh at, and yeah. it's just you know some of it is just, it, it, and it's not even absurd. It's just just kind of funny. I mean, the first mm -hmm. sequence of him trying to kill whatever that the rabbit, rabbit thing, thing <laughs> rabbit yeah. thing, and the thing just turns around, and just kicks his butt. Yeah, and, just like doesn't you know, care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing what now? Me, me, me. Yeah, <laughs> wanders off, mm. and and it's just it. Like I said, it just made me laugh. The the witch that mm -hmm. he's supposed to live with is is funny. You know, mm -hmm. she's very put upon, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. there's there's very elements, ecky elements. Uh, I think are, are are coming up here pretty soon. And mm -hmm. um, but towards the end of it, I got a Full Metal Alchemist vibe a little mm -hmm. bit unintentionally, mm -hmm. and it kind of reminded me arm. Or well, no, it was well. You know, it's fine to bring that up, but yeah, there's there's that. But no, it's more along the lines of the guy who's overseeing the entrance academy mm -hmm. exam. Remind me of Roy Mustang oh, a little bit, okay. and, yeah, and his right. his assistant who was more level headed, mm. kind of was like Hawkeye, or you know, okay. uh, that's actually his boss. <laughs> That, that little short yeah, haired yeah, girl yeah. is actually yeah. his, his boss. boss. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, she's okay. like, she's like the major or something, or and he's uh, the captain okay. or something. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah. So it just kind of relationship, that, yeah, yeah, and just kind of had that that little bit of a vibe to it, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, meeting the characters, there's nothing here that's then there's nothing. I, I don't just don't see this being serious at all. Oh no no no! Yeah. It's extremely just, formulaic. And, 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 extremely yeah, right, and, and and I feel we're going to go into harem here pretty. Oh soon. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you mean pretty yeah. soon? It's only <laughs> harem. Pretty much. This, this this ship as soon as the doors open and the gate came down, you know, it was harem all the way. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I mean, and all those characters are just going to be as goofy in episode 10 as they are in episode 10. Mm-hmm. You know? And they yeah. fill all their, their parts. Uh, the uh, belt, cursed belt, belt girl, mm-hmm. who is just basically Anna from um, uh, uh, SOX. What the... Uh, um, SOX Brigade. Oh, um, Shimonetta? Shimonetta. Um, it's definitely, she's obviously Anna from Shimonetta. Wow, you know, the yeah. Eyes, yeah. The heart eyes mm-hmm. and the, yeah. I don't know, what are you talking about? Are, who are you? Why are you near him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, here right. we go. <laughs> yep. It's like, so they, they it hits all the right buttons for just idiot comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know just a, just a enjoyable OP character who just, you know, is so loving and fun and kind and doesn't realize its power and just, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to just enjoy and smile watching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have a nice time. Absolutely. Um, you can also have a nice time when you are surfing in Wave Let's Go Surfing. And we, we talked about this before on the show. Why is there no surfing anime? Where is the surfing anime? Here it is. Um, heard the call. Yeah, they heard the call. And the funny thing is, I was, you know, when I was thinking about a surfing anime, I was like, what would a surfing anime be? This. Yeah. Th- th- this is a surfing anime with, you know, boy surfing. surfing. Like, it's just, there's, yeah. they got it. It's not particularly deep or complex. It's not particularly, it doesn't go in any odd directions. It's just, no. let's go surfing. <laughs> Literally, 1990s movie of boy walking along the beach, seeing this guy doing an awesome Riding the wave, and at first I thought it was Yowie the way that they were. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, going, is, is he in love with the surfing? Where the guy surfing? Mm, yeah. A little from Column A. Oh, they, you know, <laughs> and, and Point Break done all without like stealing money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or, or 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 the trust of it. Anyway, mm. so the you know so you go through it. It's just very nineties. You know, like person who wants to suddenly. This is their calling now. This is suddenly what they want to do, and you know they, you know, his best friend is like perplexed because he's like, "I serve all the time. Why don't you ever come mm-hmm. on with me?" Because I'm, like, I'm not in love with you, with you. <laughs> right? You know, I'm just <laughs> like, why, you know, it's just the love triangle. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the, the new surfer guy is, of course, a transfer student. Of course, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. natural. You know, came there for the waves, mm-hmm. and you know, all the girls are. Um, ah. You know, and there's the surf shop that's not mm. doing so well, and this, that, and the other thing. It's owned by the same guy who owns the skate shop. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, same family, same family. Both tough it, ventures it's the in cousin. this economy. Yeah, it's, it's the cousin. And it's just, it, it, you just watch it, and it's just like, and then, of course, you get again. Well, he does really well for the first time. Well, you know, he's got good balance because his father, he watched his father, who was a construction worker, work on high beams. It's like, oh, do we have to have that? Wow. So you, you know, can inherit those skills? It was amazing. Apparently he can. And his then, father was a carpenter, so he could naturally build a boat. <laughs> okay? Sure. But, so, but it was, it was just kind of funny. It's, but it, it really, at this point, and it starts off with a competition. Mm-hmm. With the beginnings of the competition, mm-hmm. and they show these different surfers. One of them is the best friend, of course. You know, going through it, mm-hmm. and then there's a really interesting surfboard on there. The mm. the Lolita surfboard. Did you see that? One? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like going, okay. One of the characters and, has a, a body pillow for a surfboard, basically, yeah. in terms of yeah, the, right. the design on it. <laughs> it's just like Daki Makara in the waves. Yep. Awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so obviously the story arc is he's a novice surfer and he enters eventually we'll get to that point where he's part of the contest mm-hmm. and you know he goes uh, whatever his the, the transfer student says I hope you watch me you know whatever and, you know, yeah. I'll be surfing for mm-hmm. you you yep <laughs> oh. D- just wait for the entrance of Shark Coon yes oh uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes thank you Wesley um, so yeah um, you want to serve me anime? You got it. I have no way. I, I, I was not expecting this. This won one of my awards in the season pre-preview of What on Earth is This? Um, we get to talk about One Direct Priority. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. This everyone, is... Everyone, everyone, everyone. 
Yeah. Uh, it made me feel things. Yeah. This is right up my alley. Um, this is, okay, Satoshi Kon, Imagine Lane, Boogie Pop, Madoka Magica, I would argue. It's that kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's weird. Yeah. It's heavy. Real heavy. And it's very symbolic. Yes. And it, boy, is it gorgeously animated. Um, like I was saying before, you have the character animation, how characters move, hesitation in people, how people move, all that kind of stuff is just amazing. Yeah. Um, it is... Oh. Oh, it hit all my buttons. Um, and it's not for everybody. It is not for everybody. But yeah, it's... Ooh. Oh. Let's, let's put it this way. It's, it yeah. starts with the main character, the, the girl. Mm-hmm. Looking over a firefly. Knife, yep. Mm hmm. And she buries it and makes a grave for the firefly. Yep. 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 Exactly. Mm hmm. Almost um, as if it had been caught in a net in a small cave. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's, it's beautifully rendered but mm. the subject some of the subject matters as, as it goes through is, yeah. is, is very tough mm. um, well the rendering just the, the the fluidity of the movement that they use for the, the yeah characters. yeah and we've talked about you know scarred the praetor and, and these other things where you know the the background renderings were amazing and the you know they took the highlight mm -hmm. this there, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the backgrounds were rendered in like super, super kind of crazy, amazing. It br mm. brings to the eye. They were so incredibly well placed, well yeah. integrated, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it had a, a. It was like a symphony. Mm. That the movement mm. of the characters through the space yeah. was so. It had such good beat and such mm. good timing that it just. It allowed you to feel the full force the, of the feels effect mm -hmm. yeah. without, like, distraction one way or another. You're not, like, mm -hmm. super over-focused on one thing or another, and it just it just blended so well in. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in, you know, certain sections where you start seeing the appearance of blotches and splotches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How that integrates into that space without being... It is discordant because of the way it's supposed to be. Very digitally, yeah. But the way that it appears is, I, I swear, it's almost semi-organic. That mm -hmm. it just kind of appears yeah. in a way, and it's not above or under the the background portion. Yeah. It is just a, a natural integrated part of it. That you're just like, wow. Yeah, and especially wow. for a, a show where things operate according to a certain dream logic. Yeah. It, yeah. That's so critical that you know, things have to feel real. Right, there yeah. has to be that logic, otherwise folks are just you know on a green screen basically. Right. Um, yeah, and this is uh, this is the first thing that this person has directed, which wow. blows my mind. Um, yeah. Um, he's done work. I believe it's he. Um, uh, Shin Wakabayashi. Um, he's an animator uh, and storyboarder, and I think okay. that comes through. Um, he's worked on Blood Sea, Darling in the Franks. Both of the F Ooh. series, um, from a, a FMA Brotherhood, a bunch of key animation on that, um, and just a variety of other things. Um, so I think that experience in keying animation kind of yeah. really helps make this work. But yeah, I mean, wow, this is, this is great. I fear this first episode is going to be the high point. You know, it could be one of those shows where they blew everything on their first episode. Um, but, man, it is just really, really cool. Um, um, as far as I know, there's no relation to Ikohara stuff, but, yeah, it is very Ikohara. Um, Kuniko Ikohara, um, Revolutionary Girl Utena, um, Noir Penguin Drum, those, those things. It has that kind of a vibe to it. Um, but, yeah, it's... Ooh, if, if you like Ikohara stuff, this is definitely also down your, down your alley. Yeah, it's got definitely an Otre kind of element to it, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. not so far off the map that mm -hmm. it's off-putting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's still, <laughs> this is going to sound really insane to say, 
given that it is this thing, mm. it is still entirely relatable. Yeah. <laughs> it's just mm. like, <laughs> yeah. Not that I, Uten Uten and Penguin Drum but no, aren't relatable. But, I, I yeah. think that's a great point because Utna gets. Utna starts so abstract, if you will. Yeah. It starts so visually distinctive. It takes you a while to really start feeling for the characters and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. You know, right. slapping Anthe is just kind of comedic to yeah. with almost. Which yeah. You're like, what, what, what are they doing with this? And then you kind of get into it. Yeah, no, this is much more grounded. Or how about Penguin Drum when she's mm. like, you know, she calls them in to like conference and it's just like all this stuff going on. You're like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. What's going on? Much less Yuri Kumo Arashi. Um, <laughs> lesbian Bear Storm. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is a. Love that show, but boy, it's weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that is Wonder Egg Priority. Um, Again, I don't want to say too much about, like, individual things because it is so symbolic and visual. It doesn't really make sense to explain. Um, But, yeah, it's... I would would wonder, now that we've... With this episode one, and I'm not going to say more about, Mm -hmm. but what we see with regards to the thing that she gets the freebie of, it has a code Mm -hmm. on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we see others in that last bit that have mm-hmm. other codes mm-hmm. and i'm wondering if this is something that is the it's a it's uh, it's an easter egg uh, <laughs> that those those have some meaning mm-hmm. that we are either going to find out or that we are invited mm-hmm. to explore right. somehow through either wikipedia <clears throat> or whatever like stance sources yeah. that there are understand what those mean if they if there's an additional element that provides a different layer to what's mm-hmm. going on. and it's also worth mentioning and phil's pointing out it has kind of a maho shoujo thing and there is it's a, I, it, it's a good point there is a magical girl formula to it in a sense right right like she is saving a world every time um but they're like there's no transformation thing with none, none, none of the uh the 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 yeah. elements of it um I also find it interesting, and kind of to that point, it seems like, you know, she, she's not the only girl to whom this is happening, right? but it seems to all be, like, tween girls. Yeah. And that's an interesting sort of theme. So, which, I mean, which we don't necessarily, we only have a, a first episode to say, so... Yeah, it's true, yep. It's hard to ascertain mm-hmm. whether whether the things that transpire are protagonist could his girl and yeah. other people related might be boys true that, are, that, that they have to go do things for yeah i'm just basing it off the key visual which just sure does look like four tween girls so i don't right. know yeah. Yeah. well I was, I was saying it's right now we only have that selection mm-hmm. but the people that they that they interact with oh yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, yeah. yeah 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 coat 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 toy whatever coy coy her friend yeah, mm-hmm. Koito, Koito, Koito. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we don't know that that could be, you know, Inuyasha could. You know what I mean? We right, don't we yeah. yet have enough data to know whether this is all going to be female related in oh, yeah. all contexts oh, yeah. or whether it's. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't. That, I, know? I don't mean it's going to be that. I mean, I think the magic girl is always going to be a girl. Yeah, I think that could. Yeah. I mean, that could be again mm, from yeah. the key visual. You're right. That could be just yeah. who they are. Mm. Yeah. So, so for those of you who haven't watched this anime, it, and the we're taking great lengths to talk around. Yeah, a lot of stuff here mm-hmm. because literally the, the only reason why I brought up the grave of the fireflies reference is because it didn't feel like a spoiler yeah to yeah. anything and, else but but anything else that we might talk yeah. about this yeah. is definitely going to be something of a spoiler for you so just and, understand that that when we're talking around it it's it, yeah. there's a reason and, and the thing is I, I wouldn't mind spoiling what happens in this episode it's just that i think i would need to spend half an hour I, it, yeah. explaining, explaining every, every single every thing single that you thing. see right, to, yeah. yeah it's it, mm, well, I mean, this, this, this one really does air on the side of like Highly recommend watching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if you only see this one episode, that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah, see this because that's... there's just not sufficient verbiage Time. to give a, a complete synopsis of what's going on in one episode, mm-hmm. not the whole series. Yeah, one freaking episode. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So take but... the 24 minutes, 
do it and then you'll understand what we're how we're like dancing around this because of what's going on in it yeah yeah, yeah. this is this is we could yeah literally spend the next hour talking about yeah. like an episode <laughs> certain parts of it just just parts of it yeah yeah, yeah you know the locker the yeah. locker yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. um the statue it's interesting yeah yeah um so yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting show. Um, um, yeah, and that's a good point, Phil. I I I'm also curious about the general tone of this show, where it's going to feel. It doesn't feel like a downer in the same way that *The Fireflies* feels like a downer. Right. Um, it feels like somebody who's working through things. Um, but I don't. So I I don't think it's going to turn into a lighthearted comedy. No. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I so I don't know whether. If you're into watching, like, stupid, silly, nonsensical, (laughs) ridiculous crap, Mm -hmm. this is going to be the dope slap wake-up call that you would consider to be a downer if that's all you ever watch. Right. Mm -hmm. If you watch across the spectrum, Mm -hmm. this is, this has got serious message underneath what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, this is something to, to view, to internalize, and Mm -hmm. to, to, to digest. Yeah. Not just Mm -hmm. something fluffy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and then and then once you watch this episode and you digest it and you see this and you start understanding why we're talking about it the way we are, that's when you watch Skate to the Infinity. That's when you watch <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a Spider. So what? Because you're gonna need that. Mm-hmm. You're gonna need that afterwards. You're gonna be like, like, oh, I feel the vein in my forehead. Please, something mm-hmm. like this. Yeah, you know. exactly. Watch some surfing. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's get radical, surfing. dude. Radical mom. Let's shred some gnarly waves. <laughs> so that is the season. That is all that we saw this season. Again, there's some OVA, some ONA, some season two stuff that we Log Horizon, to season Log Horizon. Three, Absolutely. After five years. Laid oh, back yeah. camp, anyone? Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get to the point where the end of that, I'm just like, I'm tearing up a little because I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's just so, I just don't. Uh, Adore this show, <laughs> and non non Biori non stop. Mm-hmm. The end theme is done by Nano Ripe, and that's like I uh, they did the music for Food Wars. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Okay. And some other and some other. Oh, just, I'm, that's one I've got to go onto iTunes and buy. Mm. I, I just, cool. I, and it's it is a non non Biori song. You mm. hear it, and you can just mm. see Range and the girls, and you can just mm. feel that sort of background going on it's just like oh god nice thank you thank you i'm so (laughs) glad (laughs) these two series because that is just bliss Mm. to sit back and watch yeah it might inspire me on a on a lazy sunday evening if we're not if we don't have a film or anything that we're Mm -hmm. doing but like just start watching bits and pieces of the of Eurocamp and non on fury just to decompress it just Mm -hmm. totally fall asleep (laughs) relax there we go yeah Cool. Center myself. Get my chi and my chakras in alignment. Exactly. <laughs> but we're not done yet tonight. We have more stuff coming. I'm going to cover the anime news uh, shortly. I'm going to take a quick break, uh, refill our waters, and be back in just a few minutes. Um, so we will see you in just a few minutes. <laughs> 